In order to share my biggest regret, you need to hear this context first where I'm coming from. My sister, she's a freshman in college, she texted me today asking, how do I follow up with this alumni who spoke at my Woman in Finance event? I suggested that she could say, your message really resonated, I'd love to keep in touch, I'm gonna send you a note on LinkedIn to connect, have a great rest of the day. My sister then proceeded to text me back and forth five times saying, how does this sound? I, I don't want to sound stupid. What should I say as a subject line? And I said, look, it doesn't have to be perfect. It really doesn't matter what you say. Just hit send. That's really all that matters. There's a lesson in all of this that you and I can both take from to hopefully find more value in our lives as well. And it's don't wait to do something out of the fear that it's not going to be perfect. Don't not do something out of your perceived fear or insecurity that people are going to view you in a negative light. Someone messaged me on LinkedIn the other day and they said, Trent, I I'm really scared to make calls. Um, how can I get better? Like, what advice do you have for me? And I said, well, look, go make more calls and you will naturally get better over time. If you want to get stronger, don't read a book on how to do push-ups. Go do push-ups. Go do the actual thing. A real life example for me is I wanted to start a podcast. I wanted to reach a wider audience. I wanted to continuously drive more value and impact. So I said, I'm gonna start a podcast. And I was literally handicapped for two weeks. I was in my own head and I didn't start because I needed the perfect title. I thought I had the perfect title and then it was being used somewhere else. And I was like, oh, I'm never gonna think of a title. And I delayed the project for two weeks because I couldn't think of the title. Just last weekend, I thought of the title. Within 24 hours of thinking of the name of the podcast and how I wanted to brand it, I signed up for anchor.com so I could publish on Spotify, Apple. I bought a subscription to Riverside so I can do video podcasts. I didn't know that existed. I didn't know how to do video podcasts. And since then, I've recorded over three episodes um, and we are fully live, we are going. And it's because once I realized I don't need to be perfect. I just need to start. I'm not going to record five, 10 episodes and then wait to see what people say and make adjustments and then, and then post later. It's I'm recording episode one, I'm putting it out and then indefinitely I'm going to record episodes week after week. And I was scared to do that at first. I even changed my title on LinkedIn to host of sales prestige podcast. I post it online for everyone in my network, for everyone to see. A lot of people are scared to put themselves out there like that. But I realized that I, I would actually regret not doing so more than actually trying and maybe being judged by others, maybe getting, I got critical, some guy messaged me on LinkedIn this morning and gave me harsh feedback. He's like, hey, I didn't really like how your delivery there, you should have smoked more, blah, 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 X, Y, I. It, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks, all that matters is your confidence in yourself and actually doing the thing and taking the actions. The framework that I apply, that I learned from Jeff Bezos, is called regret minimization. Think about your life at age 80. Hopefully we live to that point that with the life expectancy going up, we, we probably should live a lot longer. But imagine your life at age 80. And would you regret doing that thing or not doing that thing at that point in your life? Because when you're 80, um, it's too late. It's too late, it's over. Even, even when you're like 60, 70-ish, like it's over, it's too late. Fortunately, many of you who watch this channel like me are in that 18 to 35 range. So we actually have a lot of time. Time is still our asset. Um, we have enough time to make things happen. So I try and look at things through the perspective of regret minimization. I want to minimize the number of regrets I have in my life. So whatever that thing you may be worried about right now is, that follow up you have to send, that angry customer, getting rejected by that girl, um, not being invited to that social event, the things that you overthink and take days to process sometimes to get over or accept it or feel a certain way, literally do not matter. In the grand scheme of things, they do not matter. When you're 80 years old, you will not think back, oh wow, I lost that deal to my competitor, um, even though the customer was my friend and they were a champion. It literally doesn't matter. So when you think about this in the context of starting a podcast, sending a follow-up email, asking that girl or guy out, it literally, in the grand scheme of things, does not matter. And the only reason it does matter is because you would actually regret not doing it in the long run than of doing it, but then it not working out in your favor. So I use the regret minimization framework in my own life. And speaking of the podcast, episode number two of Sales Prestige Podcast 
is officially live right now at the time of this video on Spotify, Apple. Go give it a listen on your commute while you're doing some prospecting. Maybe toss in the background while you're doing some cold calls to get you fired up. First link in the description below is to the video only podcast channel. We put up the video clips. I made some personal edits that you won't find on Spotify, Apple, and that episode comes out later today. So go check out that channel, go show it some support and that would really fire me up. My biggest regret is also one of the things I am the most grateful for. And I regret moving to Plano. I currently live in North Dallas by myself in Plano, Texas, plain O. It just sounds boring. It's a suburb. There's literally no young people up here so that I could live right next to my office. I go into the, my, my office five days a week and I basically voluntarily um, left my limited social life living downtown in Dallas in the city as a young guy, single, to move to a quiet suburb by myself so that I could completely go all in on my obsessions, my dreams, trying to create my vision for the future which is helping millions of people, giving them value through my content, and also building a successful career. And that involves starting a technology company, attracting great talent. And as I think about the building blocks to get there, I need to be wildly successful in my career right now. So I need to hit my quota every quarter. Um, I need to keep getting better. And the analogy I like to think about is someone like a Kobe Bryant. He was so obsessed with basketball during the summers he would do two days, he would focus on getting better. And four years in his career, he widened the skill gap by so much that other players, no matter how hard they tried, they could not catch up with him because he was so far ahead. That's how I view myself right now because I completely removed all distractions so that I could focus entirely on reading books, on growing as a person, on getting healthier, on building my mindset so that it's bulletproof. In order to live a fulfilling and maximum happy state life, you need to have a tribe, you need to have a community, you need to have friends that inspire you, that love you, that you can connect with. And that's missing in my life right now. And that's a major gap. And that's something I'm incredibly aware of that I am working to fix. And taking my own advice, um, I need to take more action which I'm not doing. And as I think about my life at age 80, I would regret not having some of those lifelong friendships that perhaps could have been formed if I would have remained in the city. So my solution to this is this year is pure monk mode, living by myself, living in Plano, going into the office every day, making videos every day, building out this podcast, doing all we can to build the infrastructure. And at the end of this year, I plan to move. I wanna to move to a city. Austin's on my radar. I wanted to open up, wanted to get real with you guys. Um, that's my analysis of myself trying to be as self-aware as possible. I'm working to get better. I have a lot to learn and I can't thank you guys enough. Those of you that stick around, those of you that watch these videos, those of you that support the channel, go check out the podcast. I'm really excited about that. Tech Sales Tom, he's got 200,000 followers on TikTok. Enterprise Sales at, at Fang. You're really gonna enjoy hearing from them. So go click the link in the description. Go subscribe to that channel and cue that episode up because you're gonna learn a lot from it. Have a great rest of the day. Bye.